Hit it. Y'all ready? Let's go. Okay, YouTube, so I'm out here in the shop with the good folks from Hypertherm. We got Dave, the, uh, the regional sales guy, and the one and only Mr. Jim Colt. And uh, we've been making a lot of videos for you guys today. And the last one we just did was uh, talking about doing some plasma gouging. And I've got a carbon arc torch that I've been looking for an excuse to break out and try out. And I figured we might as well talk a little bit about uh, how the plasma gouging process compares to um, compares to carbon art gouging. So full disclosure, both of these guys are with Hypertherm, but uh, you know that doesn't really affect anything because as you'll probably see, I, I really think for most people having done a fair amount of both of these processes, uh, the plasma gouging is probably going to be a lot cheaper and a lot more efficient and still do what you need it to do. But both of these guys know a lot more about the technical aspects of that than I do. I've just operated them both somewhat, uh, not like a lot of people have. So what, what do you guys think? What can you, uh, what, what's on your mind with all this? Well, the, the processes are, um, you know, they each have their niches where they absolutely work best. They both it, definitely have their place. So, and I think, uh, my feeling is that the, uh, the, the plasma gouging process, the way it is today, not the way it was a few years ago, uh, is probably, probably got the advantage of being the easiest to learn, easiest to use for a beginner. Yeah. Uh, and and once you learn it, it's uh, it's a it's, it's a pretty good process. There are some some places where you just don't have the clearance to get in close enough. If you got a really tight place where you can stick a rod down in, and the plasma torch isn't going to go in there. So there, there are some limitations like that. But overall, uh, the metal removal rate is uh, you know can be equal. The plasma's got some advantages as far as noise and power requirements, things like that. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with what Jim says. I think it's also more forgiving. Yeah. So for the average person that's not a skilled welder that works all day in a shop, I think there's a much quicker learning curve and it's a lot more user friendly. You Definitely. can, you can um, take pieces of parts apart without doing damage to them. Yeah. Um, sometimes the carbon arc gouging, if it, you know, like Jim said, there's a place for that in the market. Um, but for most operators, this is just a much more friendly process and, and more versatile. And where where it's applicable, yeah, definitely. And then this is a, the, if you do the do all the math, figure out the cost of each process. Maybe the cost per foot of gouge. If you had a similar gouge, mm -hmm. I think you're going to find a, a, a huge advantage with the plasma. The consumables and the, the gouging consumables last longer than cutting consumables uh, in the plasma torch. That's really yeah. interesting. And so that's because it's easier. We don't have such high energy density that we need. Uh, we're, we're washing the metal away, and it's a little bit easier on the consumables. So, um, so your cost with the plasma or the consumables, which lasts a long time, thousands of feet of gouging, would be uh, what I'd suspect. And uh, and the air consumption is lower, um, and we don't have to we don't have to buy rods. So. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the other advantages I like too, if I am working on something, I don't have to stop. That carbon arc rod is about 14 inches long. Oh, yeah. You get down to a certain point, you have to stop and reload. Yeah. And we uh, we can gouge as long as we're within the duty socket parameters of the machine, which is typically a lot longer yeah, than what you can do with a gouging longer. rod. So. Probably not if you had that compressor you had yesterday. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we have the larger air compressor. So it's uh, we're probably going on about 14 hours or so since we started filming this morning. But we're, we're doing our best here for you guys. Uh, my perception of this personally is that I think the carbon art gouging is really best left to, you know, super industrial applications because, you know, the trade school I went to, we did some carbon art gouging in my high school, vocational school, and we had about a 300 amp unit and we were winding that thing out. Now the welder we're going to be using tonight for this puts out 325 amps and we're going to be like full power all the time. And with an engine drive, it's not so bad because mine at least has a 100% duty cycle. I think they pretty much all do. But if you're using like an old transformer based welder, what are those things maxed out at? Like 20% or something? One of the old like refrigerator sized units? Not a lot, especially compared to something like that. The other thing is, uh, you know, not only do you need a lot of power, you need industri literally industrial quantities of air. We have a 60 gallon air compressor and it puts out 12.8 CFM and I fully expect that to be gone 
very, very quickly, wouldn't yeah. you say? That's not that's not going to last this very long, and you could do a ton of plasma cutting. We've been running a PowerMax 85 doing our gouging, and it's kept up. It's actually putting out more air than we're using because we cut, and then it starts, and then while we're still cutting, it stops. So it's really putting out a lot of air. So, you know, if you are going to be doing anything up to and including light industrial type stuff, you're probably going to end up with a plasma cutter if, if that's something you'd be interested in. And if you get almost any of the PowerMax units, I believe it's only the 30 XP and the 30 Air that don't have this function. Yeah, you really need 45 amps or more to, yeah. to do the gouging. So. so anything PowerMax 45 or larger, there's a good chance if you're doing a lot of stuff, you might be in the market for something that size anyway. And the hyperthermal machines have a gouge mode. So you really you don't even have to go out and buy any because I think they even come with a set of gouging consumables. I know mine Correct. did. Yeah, it comes yeah. with a consumable stack for gouging. Definitely. If you get out into an industrial application too, talking about using a DC type welding power supply, you're going to typically see people using 600 amps yeah. you know, and larger three phase machines and we're talking about using 45 to 65 amp machines. Yeah. Yeah. So the way we come up with that cost basis is if you look at the electrical consumption, the rods and the air that we have to produce, it actually is much, much cheaper. Yep. To use plasma. Yeah. So if you're doing, if you're like a shipyard or something, it might be one thing, but for, well, I'll put it this way I've done pretty much everything I've done in the last five years just with plasma gouging, because I, up until a couple weeks ago, didn't even own a carbon arc torch. I feel like for most people and the average consumer, it's probably not it's probably going to be the way to go because you don't really have to buy anything and it'll do a lot, a lot more than a lot of people think and a lot more than some people give it credit for. Whereas if you're going to be carbon art gouging, find a huge transformer machine. Never in a million years would I recommend doing this off of an inverter. We were talking about no, this it's, it's very tough on the power supplies. Uh, the carbon art gouging too, and so it's like you really don't want to have a really good, high quality, high end TIG machine, yeah, or something that you've invested a lot of money in, and then you're going to turn around a carbon art gouge. You're probably doing more damage to the machine. Than Definitely, yeah, yeah it, it does tear them up. In fact, a lot of shops will have a dedicated carbon art gouging machine, some old ginormous hunk of junk machine that's ragged and beat, and it's they they basically just run it into the ground just with carbon art gouging off of it. So, you know, you need something like that. You need something that puts out insane quantities of air, or you can still do a lot as we demonstrated in that video and we're going to demonstrate here just with a good old PowerMax plasma cutter. So, anybody have anything else to add? I think we covered it. All right. Good. Let's get set up and this is going to be fun. Air hose on. Yeah. Good. So we're using the same 12,000 watt generator that we use for our plasma gouging and after setting it to its gouge setting and firing up this machine I just went ahead and maxed out the arc force. I want as stiff of an arc as possible and then I just started uh, getting warmed up with this gouging on an old axle tube and removing some brackets and it worked pretty well. So this is one of my first gouges and as you can see it's an impressive process that requires some very impressive machinery but it can remove a quite impressive amount of material. of how to use this thing and I don't mean this to be a uh, like a how-to video for carbon arc gouging. Basically we got this block here with the holes in it. This is where the air shoots out of. What we do is we take the gray part of the electrode
and we put it in there like this. I generally try not to have more than about three or four inches of stick out here because otherwise the air fans out and it's not very direct. So uh, basically once we have this, we push the button for air. And then uh, once we have the air going, we just stab it into our material and it is on. So we just got done doing some carbon art gouging, and I gotta be honest, that was more fun than a highly appropriate metaphor I will spare you guys from. However, quite enjoyable, but uh, to be honest, I felt like it was kind of like, uh, like watering your flowers with a fire hose, so to speak, despite the fact that we were maxed out on our 325 amp welding power source. I felt like we were kind of closer to the lower end of what we could use on those electrodes, which were the smallest ones I had, by the way. Right. Would right. you guys agree with yeah, that? Yeah, I agree. That's probably a good 400 amp plus process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. And like you said, it's like watering your plants with a fire hose. It's all or none. It's great. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So great for some things. It's got applications. The gouges deeper. <coughs> the profiles deeper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once we start weaving. Um, the bottom of our puddle, we get the motion, you know, yep. marks that you don't get. Yeah. So there's pros and cons to both, right? I would venture to say, really all this is good for is removing insane quantities of material with epic amounts of power and gargantuan quantities of air. It's not the kind of thing I would want to use to remove uh, smaller welds. I'd say anything less than about three quarters of an inch or so would probably be a lot easier to do with the plasma gouging. Yeah, yeah I'd agree. I was as gentle as I could possibly be removing that bracket off of that junk axle tube and still pretty much destroyed both pieces. I mean, we penetrated, with me not even trying, I'll add, I'd say at least three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch into both of those things. So that could really be a problem if you're trying to salvage both parts. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a really hardcore industrial process. That's really what I think of it, and that's really about all it's good for. I think most things would be better off with, with something like the, like the Power Max 45 even. It's just a lot more controllable, yeah. and it's in no more way. More versatile. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot more versatile, and it's not limited. To it's me, I found the, yeah, I could, I could really, the, the plasma starts when you pull the trigger. Where, yeah. With this, it was a little difficult, especially if the metal had a little oxidation on it or something like you that. Stab so through it. Getting, getting the arc started, that might have been, I'm sure it was me, you didn't seem to have as much trouble with that, but uh, uh, the plasma just seemed easier. Pull the trigger and and, and, yeah. and I could control it when I stretched the arc out. I could, I could, I felt like I could control the plasma a little bit better. I felt I like if, you know, obviously it was a harder process, but you know, removing the two pieces with the plasma was relatively easy. Even though I work for hypertherm, I don't do that every day. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get yeah. to gouge that much. Uh -huh. And we took those two parts apart and we made reusable parts. I think if I, if me personally, if I tried to do that with carbon arc, we might have one or no usable parts <laughs> left over, which kind of makes exactly. the process yeah. a little bit yeah. harder. I figured looking back on that bracket removal in hindsight, I would have <laughs> chosen to sacrifice one part over the other. And maybe in some situations you can do that, but I still think the plasma gouging is, I think it has much less of a learning curve. I should clarify, I'm not an expert in really either of these, but especially the carbon arc. When I was in vocational school, however, we had a huge dumpster of welded 
material and drops from some fab shop dropped off and we had a carbon arc torch and a lot of time on our hands and we thought it was the coolest thing ever. So, but I haven't really done it since then. With a little bit of practice, you can do a lot with this, but I really do feel like the plasma gouging is the either easier of the two to pick up if you've never done either before. And it's just it's just a lot more controllable. You know, if you want to cut a bracket off of, off of something, like a trailer or whatever, I think you're probably going to be a lot easier with the plasma. And despite the fact that the plasma doesn't seem to have the hardcore metal removal properties of what we just did, yeah. I don't consider my 45 to be at all limited for the kinds of things I do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Sounds yeah. good. Fun, fun learning experience. And, uh, that was a blast. Good experience. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Got to see a fair, yeah. you know, uh, application of both and, and they both fit exactly, you yeah. know, in, in the market. But I would agree with what you said. The carbon arc, I think, is much more of a heavy duty industrial mm -hmm. pipeline, vessel shop, uh, offshore manufacturing mm -hmm. structure where they're down and dirty trying to remove a lot of weld indications lot down and deep, weld. down deep into a pipe or vessel wall or something yeah, like that. Definitely. So it's, it's only 10 30 at night. What are we going to do now? I don't know. <laughs> Well, we should figure out what's burning because I smell burning rubber. I think one of us stepped on something and we've just been like dragging a long smoldering boot for the last 10 minutes. That was a blast. Anybody got anything else to add? Nope. I think we're good. No? Cool. Nope. Go get them and right. get after it and have fun. Yeah. Yep. I'll find some random links to put in the description of this video for you guys. That was a blast. I'd really like to thank you guys for being a part of this video and I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. There you go, you got three random points of view on this and uh, hopefully some video that you enjoyed and I'm gonna go and sleep now. So, yep. good night everybody, good night YouTube. See you later, Thanks YouTube. again for coming out here, Jim. You bet, thanks, thanks you, Dave. It was fun, thanks a lot. It's great to meet yeah. you again. And uh, until next time.